Welcome everybody to the Think Like a Marketer show. I'm Randall Chestnut and today we're going to have a great show. Hey, if you haven't tuned into the show before, the Think Like a Marketer show, we interview marketers, innovators and ask them exactly how they think, find out some tips and tricks that may help you with your uh, show and your business. And today is like no other show, we're going to be talking about live video because that's what we're doing now. And that's what we like doing. And I really feel and and uh, I think you'll agree when you meet this uh, gentleman that live video is a, is basically a land grab right now. Um, you know, it's here recently due to Facebook mainly, but not just Facebook. Uh, live video has been democratized. It used to be if you wanted to be on television, you had to go to a television show had you know, lots of money, pitch your idea and then you know be insulted and kick to the curb and say, no, thank you. Uh, where now it's like, mm, I don't need to ask anyone. I just get some basic software like the software we're going to talk about um, and just jump on and start doing it and, and learn by trial by fire. So the gentleman that I'm going to introduce to you today has produced over 600 uh, I'm sure it's way more than that by, by the, the time that we uh, have him come on. At least it'll be 601 <laughs> by the time we have him come on today. Uh, this gentleman has uh, founded a uh, an amazing segment in the video or live video stream. It's called Live Video Hub. And I want to have Mr. Stephen Henley come on or Healy. I'm sorry. I always... You know, it's, I, I, we, we had this discussion before I had a guest on before and his name was spelled R-I-C-H-A-R-D. And you would think that that's Richard, but he said, no, it's Richard. So I want to welcome to the show, Mr. Richard Healy. Richard, hey, thank you for coming on today Hi. and sharing such, you, you know, there's just such a cornucopia of knowledge. And that's going to be my largest word for the year. Right. Um. Okay. I can only copy it. Yeah, that's a, that's a, quite a word. Uh, Randall, first of all, thank you for inviting me uh, onto the show. I'm honored to be here and I'm looking forward to talking about live video and everything related to that. So thank you. Yeah. So, you know, Richard and I, we met inside of actually, uh, well, all right. I'm sorry. Um, I said, Richard, uh, Stephen. You did. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this see is live. Happens, We're good. See what happens with this live stuff. Um, you get caught up with names and you get tongue tied. So I met I met Stephen um, in the Be Live group, and I, I just like enjoyed watching you. You're interacting. You know, you have a lot of knowledge, uh, especially when it revolves around this software. So, from my understanding, you actually work directly with Be Live, or at least help manage their uh, video group. Is that true? Yeah, I, I manage the live video hub on behalf of Be Live. So that it's the Be Live. TV live video hub, which is quite a mouthful. And basically that's the one place where 174 different shows all broadcast on BeLive.tv appear. And at the moment we've got about 15 shows a day on there going live on their own page and on the live video hub. And it's like, it's the equivalent of a TV channel because you can go to the live video hub, you can see that day shows, you can set reminders for the shows. When the shows go live, you can get involved as people come today by making comments and you can like the shows and promote. And what we're about is actually promoting the 174 shows that are actually on the hub. So it's a TV channel, but it's a live yeah. TV channel. <laughs> hey, I gotta, I gotta confess something. Okay. That, that, um... So I brought you on because you have a British accent and, and we all know that people take someone with a British accent more seriously than somebody who has a Texas accent like me. So I apologize I, for that. It, it, it works the other way around too. I do assure you. Um, yeah, I, it's basically it, the, the one thing you do need, uh, which when you're going to go live is you've got to get the voice right. You've got to get your voice right. You've got to make sure that people can understand what you're saying, not to rush, take your time and have, uh, I think we both agree, have a decent microphone. That's the right. starting point is to have a decent microphone. Uh, because when you go live at first, you can use your computer with its inbuilt uh, camera and microphone, but you want to improve the sound before you improve anything else. So an external microphone, unless you happen to be on a Mac, which is a good microphone, uh, an external microphone actually can uh, help not just you, but the audience as well. Right. Uh, yeah. 
You know, I, I you know, I, you, we were chatting prior to coming on, and you had asked me, you know, what, why I got into live, you know, video yeah. streaming. I mean, I just love it myself. I happen to be a highly social individual, but I know there are a lot of people out there now with social media and it's it being so noisy that there's a lot of creative people out there. And I, you know, I thought, well, what if for people who are not creative, who are not you know, that interesting, but they are very articulate at asking questions and finding interesting people would uh -huh. live video would definitely benefit those people. Cause if you're not interesting, you could always just find someone who is interesting and let them be your interesting content. And then you just do what you do, which is ask great questions. I usually you'll find that people are highly social and like me, um, you know, we're all over the place where the, you know, the more introverted people, they're more thought provoking and they really have, think about questions and come up with these really good questions and seem to be a little bit more in tune with maybe what the audience would want to have a question answered. So, That's you fine. know, I, I think live video is great for even an introvert is, is what I'm trying to get at. Oh, it, it is most, most certainly because I mean, I'm treating this as just you and I talking. And I can see that people are watching and commenting, but it's a conversation between the two of us. And as you said, if you get somebody who is passionate about what the, the topic and knows what they're talking about and get their point across, then you can host the show, produce the show uh, and, and make them win. Okay? Right. Because if they win, you win. Yeah. Right. This is true. You know, the, the thing, the, the, the unique thing about live video for me is that you, like you said, you can interact with your audience, something that you couldn't do before on television. I mean, they try it with, you know, taking Twitter, Twitter questions and, and things like that. But there's nothing like like real time someone putting a comment and you be able to speak and actually say that person's name. There's something uh magical about that. There is. I mean, being able to feature comments on screen is golden um, because not only do they feature on screen whilst we're live, but they're then recording as well. So if you are watching us at the moment and you've got a question. <laughs> right. OK. Yeah, uh, Lou like Barbara, that. nice to see you. Uh, and it's, it's just interaction is the key. Um, yes. And it's a way of, of building a network um, because what I do after the show is I go back to the show and anybody who's commented, I will either reply or message. And if I message them via Facebook Messenger, uh, then I've got on each of my shows that I do, I've got a messenger bot. Yeah. Right. And this is one of the keys to building an audience. Um, messenger bots are free unless you want to do a lot with them. And after the show, you can actually say, hello, nice of you to watch the show. That starts a conversation. So you're getting to know somebody. Then you can say, do you mind if I tell you when my next show is? And if you get, please do, then before your next show, you can send out a broadcast to everybody you've had a conversation with and they will get a notification. And I do it so that it goes out 10 minutes before I go live. Right. So 10 minutes before I go live on my show, 170 people get notified. Now, I'm not saying they all turn up to the show, but they all know it's there. We know that uh, people do come direct to the show at that time because they're live on Facebook. So uh, it's it, actually speaking to people, having conversations, starting off with any comment that's made during the show, building on that, creating a conversation, asking for permission to broadcast uh, all help to build your audience and it's a consistent audience uh, right. because unless you building an audience is as RJ will, and I will talk about later is is one person at a time one conversation at a time but you can build that up gradually until you have hundreds if not thousands of people in your messenger list uh, and when you do a broadcast you can say right okay these people commented on my Tuesday show I'll send it my Tuesday reminder to them. These people commented on my Thursday show. I'll send a reminder to them. So you can segment the audience. Right. Yeah. Exactly. You yeah. know, um, you know, having, you know, cause I speak about this topic, not, not on at the level that you do. Um, one of the things I, I talk about is that there's just so many things that you could do with a live video that it can become overwhelming for people. 
And anytime something becomes overwhelming and that crocodile brain picks it up, it's going to refuse to do it. Not because oh, yeah. Yeah. they don't, they don't understand that it can be of value. It just becomes like a, overwhelming and a lot of work and they don't want to do it. Like you were saying, there's all this pre-show stuff that you can do to help build your audience. Like, set up your chat bots to alert people that the show's coming. Um, be it able to inside of it said, hey, you know, to subscribe like Owen video does and you know the five, put five in the comments and then your yeah. you, your bot. All of those things can come in time. I try to tell people like, look, first thing is just push the button. Just push the button and learn. Just I mean yeah. I mean if you're doing it for the first time, it's not like a million people are going to log in and see you. I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> It, it, the hardest part is actually getting people to push the button and then stick with it and be consistent. You know, uh, you know, Denzel yeah. Washington is right. You're in the UK for those who people can't recognize his, his accent. He's in the UK. You're in Wilshire. Yeah. Is that what you said? You, Wilshire in England. Yeah. yeah. Near, near 20 miles from Stonehenge. Okay. Oh man. How often do you go there? Four, or five, times, four or five times a year. <laughs> I go there to have lunch. Um, <laughs> Just a sidebar. I seen, uh, you know, Ozzy Osbourne and his son has a podcast, right? And they went okay. to Stonehenge um, a couple of episodes back. If 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 you haven't watched or listened to them, it is hilarious. Those guys are amazingly funny. Uh, Ozzy Osbourne of all people. I don't know if you, oh, yeah. uh, if you followed them. Um, and they went to Stonehenge, uh, and, and it was his first time. And he grew up like literally the same, I'm an hour away. Yeah. Um, so it's amazing that sure. people tr travel from all over the world to go there. And then people who live literally 20 minutes away have never been. <laughs> well, that, that's that's it's true. You never visit places on your own doorstep, do you? But yeah. I'll, check, I'll check out uh, Aussie uh, and uh, be interesting to listen to hear his take on uh, on Stonehenge. I mean, it is an amazing place to visit because they right. built a the, the stones obviously are the thing that people go to see and that's the thing you actually get out of your car you walk a mile to the stones and and you can't see the stones for the first three quarters of a mile and then suddenly they become come into view and this can't getting bigger and bigger as you're getting closer and closer uh, and it's quite an experience it is it is a mystical place there's no doubt about it um, but they've spent uh, about three million dollars building a visitor center uh, and the visitor center has a museum which explains how the henge was built and also like any tourist attraction they've got a, a gift shop and a restaurant uh, so i'll be interested on ozzy's take on that we're going to me you're going to have to stop me meandering here otherwise you're going to get stories of well <laughs> right no i mean that's what it's no, about but right? th th this, this is this is one of the keys to actually building an audience because what you want to do is be real yeah right and talk about re real life things give something of yourself in the show and that makes it more personal and and, and more interesting to people and people will come back right um, yeah you know, you and, say that, and I, I lived in the Bay Area, San Francisco, and I had lived there for two years already before I ever went to see Alcatraz. And only went, I only went there because someone came in, uh, you know, when a family member came into town, and that was on their <laughs> list of things to do. Yeah, that, right. Uh, oh, it's true. I mean, it, it's, it's crazy, uh, the number of places around that you could actually go to, and you don't until somebody visits you. And, but um, as right. I say, I mean, what I watched before before the show, you you researched me, and I I look at your videos as well. And the, the thing is that you do, you are personable and do tell stories, and that's what brings people back. Oh, I appreciate that. So, um, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about because you know this is really where uh, the the value can come in for for me to include it. Um, because I'm nowhere near the amount of uh, shows that you've helped produce and people that you've worked with. Um, and you, uh, one of the, one of the first people to actually have a course on Udemy about live video, right? Uh, yeah, I, I was fortunate in timing. I brought my course out in March, uh, 2017. And, uh, basically it's everything you want to know about live streaming and how to use be live and the additional facilities that you can use as well before the show, during the show and after the show. 
So right. it's, it's an encyclopedia of uh, live broadcasting. And then I got together with um, Tina Shang in May of last year, and we started an organization called Be Live in Five. And we've got a Udemy course, which is free to anybody who's new to Be Live. Um, and that moment have got about 4,700 students. So yes, yes, Be Live is, is something I've been heavily invested in for quite a while now. Right. So, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about uh, live video hub, but I wanted to give you a little bit more of a runway to, to kind of walk us through. I'm someone who's brand new, uh, you know, coming on and, I, and I want to produce a show. Uh, I, I wouldn't be on B live if I didn't think right now it was the easiest, best way for someone to actually produce a show. So you kind of walk someone through who's new, who's considering it. What some tips on what you think they should do. Right. In terms, in terms of starting a show, uh, it's nice to be live, as Randall says. That's the easiest place to get started. Now, when, as Randall said earlier, when you start broadcasting, nobody's going to see you. You can do what you like for your first couple of shows. You can practice. If you want to practice privately, start a, a private Facebook group. Go in there and just broadcast just you. And get yourself comfortable on camera so that the lighting's right, your microphone's right. Everything should be as you want it to be, and you're comfortable on camera. Invite a friend into the group, a friend who will be critical but not overly critical, and then invite them on camera so you know what it feels like to be two people on camera. Then invite more friends into the group until eventually you've got about 20 people in there so that when you go live, you've got an audience watching you. But this is private. Nobody outside the, your group of friends can see it. And then you suddenly decide, right, OK, I'm going to go onto the big stage. I'm going to go live on my Facebook profile or my page. And you go live. But you've already got 20 friends who know that you can do it. And they all come along and cheer you on. So if I, if I was to do it all over again, I would take that approach. Um, then the next thing is that what you want to do then is to actually um, encourage your friends to share your show. Because every time they share your show, you're reaching a new audience, an audience that they've created of their friends. And the more shares that you can gently persuade people to do, the better. Um, that's getting started then, and as I'm doing today. One of the bestest things you can do once you've got your sea legs and you know how to broadcast, is to be a guest on someone else's show. Because that's basically, you actually, I'm sat here today, all I have to do is talk. Randall is the one who's controlling everything that's <laughs> going on here today. He's doing two or three jobs at the same time. I can just talk. If you're a guest on somebody's show, it's the easiest thing to do because you've learned your craft the hard way through going live on your own and going live with friends. But now you can come and be a guest on your show. You can reach out to another audience, and that's the way to do it. So this is why it's important. I know that uh, later today, Jeff Adams uh, is going to be a guest on Cheryl's show. And you find, I'll come to that, but that, that's basically, that's how you build up. And then you've got to start the mechanics of what you do. Um, right. And this is, this is, well, this is changing all the time because Facebook keep changing things and you get caught in the middle. Uh, once a day, you could you say, right, I'm going to go live. I'm going to share it into these groups. And then it got more complicated. Um, right. So at that, at that stage, you've not spent a penny other than on Be Live. You've got your friends involved. You've got a show on the road. And you've got your friends watching. They've told their friends. And therefore, you're increasing your audience. Now it's your turn to do some of the uh, legwork. Yeah. What, I, what I started to do is I go live half an hour before the show. Now I can go live on Facebook, on my own profile. I can go live, as I did today, on Periscope and reach out to an audience on Periscope and Twitter. Mix it up. Don't go to the same place every week because people get fed up with that. But you can go live on several different networks over the course of every month, and that gets the word out as well. Um, right. Now, of course, I'm not the only one doing this. You're doing this too. So how do you promote the shows that you're doing at the moment? 
myself mm-hmm. asking me. oh yeah i, I uh, do uh, facebook stories uh, instagram stories oh. i post them uh, events um it, occasionally you can run an ad you know a paid paid ad if you want it to really uh, drive an audience at least seeing that you're going to have a show um you know for for me it's getting my you know my sea legs so to speak um yeah. You know, just doing the, the you know, like learning what is the best way for me in in my style of you know. Yeah. There's people who like they have to have a checklist, um, and I certainly uh, learn. I'm learning now it how difficult it is to actually interview people. I see why Oprah Winfrey made so much money. It looks it seems like it would be super easy to just sit down and ask someone questions, but it's it's. It's the questions that you ask that make either or make or break a show, and uh, yeah. and then how you you know do your introduction and your interaction with the person and being able to have chemistry with that person immediately that is a talent that you that you can cultivate, but it's not oh, yeah. like you said it's, it's super easy. If somebody called me right now and said, "Hey, I want to have you on the show," I'm like, "Sure," because all I have to do is answer questions. I mean, people get so nervous about getting on a show and they're the person being interviewed. I'm like, why can you not answer questions? <laughs> I mean, how but hard it, is that? Well, the, one of the ways I, I do that is basically if, when I've got a guest on the show, I say to them, can you give me three questions to start the show? And that's three questions that they've chosen. They know the answer to. And therefore when the show starts, you go through those three questions and then it, this is this is the key. We, you, this is what is needed to do a show like the, the shows Randall's doing. Is you've got to listen. You've got to listen as a show host. You've got to listen more than you talk, because you've got to, you. What you're actually watching for and listening for is your next question, and your next question is in something that your guest is saying. Yeah, and that that that's the the skill which can be learned. To be able to pick on what somebody's saying and run with it, yeah. So it's, you've got to be on your feet. If you go think on your feet and you're actually listening to somebody, you're looking for hooks that you can pick up on. And once you've got a couple of those hooks stored away, then the conversation starts to flow because you're doing it. When you're doing it, you're doing it smoothly. There's no, you're not looking down at a notepad or anything. You're actually just carrying on a conversation. Right. You know, for me, I was a flight attendant for 12 years. So you learn how to uh, communicate with people from all over the world about random topics. So that was definitely helpful. And, you know, like you said, listening, just being, having the ability to pick up something and go, wow, would my, would the audience want to know more about that? And because, you know, we've all watched, uh, you know, a debate or someone on television and you go, ask them this, ask them this. And they don't end up asking them. Um, and that's another reason what makes live so great. If that was you, you have the ability to put in there to actually ask the person the question that the interviewer did not ask. Indeed, indeed. That's totally, totally true. And that's the, the part of the magic, the interactive part of it. The other thing I, I think is um, if you can model yourself on somebody, uh, not totally, but I, I have a hero. And that here is called Michael Parkinson and is a UK chat show host from the 70s and 80s. And if you go to YouTube and you check out uh, Parkinson Ali, you'll see an interview. He did, or he's done several interviews with Muhammad Ali. And you could see how how it was structured and how it worked. Wow. Um, you know, and it was just it's just. He even got the he got he nearly got the best of Muhammad Ali, which uh, a difficult thing to do. Wow, I mean, he yeah, definitely um, at his height, Muhammad Ali was mentally sharp. Oh yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> you, you know, if I had to pick someone, that it would be uh, Dean Martin. You remember uh, Dean? Oh, Martin. Dean, yeah, Do you know, yeah. There was just something magical about his variety show that was so spontaneous. But then when you look behind the scenes, he actually studied his craft. It was. Oh, yeah. Choreographed. Uh, yeah. Totally. Mostly. Totally. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if you look at today's comedians, 
uh, in the UK, they will do a show at the uh, London Arena, but before they've got to the 20,000 people in the audience, they've actually started off in a small uh, pub and they've done an, uh, their routine in front of 20 people. Yeah. And they right. do it in front of 20 people. And that's where the, that's where it gets ironed out, isn't it? Yeah, it's true. It's, and it's, it's kind of what we're doing now. You yeah. know, uh, you hear this a lot about people who, you know, eventually get big. You know, Gary Vaynerchuk um, talked about this before. It's like um, he actually did a time lapse of when he had the wine library and he was mm -hmm. shooting his videos about wine. And mm -hmm. he would show on the screen like one, you know, two. And he it was like building up his audience and it would show year year two, you know, 55 people watching. And then, this, you know, then it's they had this like trajectory that just shot up and there were literally yeah. thousands of people. And, uh, you know, it's like there is no overnight success. Oh, yeah, you know, exactly. uh, not even a, a lottery winner is an overnight exactly. success. <laughs> no, you've got to you've got to you've got to work at it and, and you've got to have. You've got to try and, and build a team. Right. Now, this is true. Uh, this, this is key. Networking is key um, because we live in an age where people are being social on Facebook and you can get to know them. You can broadcast with them. And I I, I enjoy going live one person, but it's, it's much more fun when there's two of you because, right. first of all, you've only got to speak half the time. Um, that's the first benefit. <laughs> you don't have to speak for the full length of the right. show. And the other thing is as well with with a co-host you can bounce off each other right um, and you become friends over a period of time i mean i've got a show uh which goes out on thursdays and it's four of us um and it's called blubbing for britain and it goes out at to 4 a.m central so you're not going to catch it i know you're not going <laughs> to catch it uh, <laughs> but we we do show number 143 this week oh wow shows. congratulations um, over the, the, that period of nearly three years now, you get to know each other, and you can just t you can come up on set, as it were, and you can just talk from from the get go, and uh, that's that's the magic of live, uh, bringing right. people together. Yeah, are you familiar with Andrew and Pete? They're in the UK, the content creators. I, I am. Yes, yes. I don't I know them. I, I'm not. I'm not. I've watched one or two of their shows. Yeah, yeah. I have them on. I have them on the show next week. Oh, brilliant! Yeah, I mean, they, they've they've got a chemistry. Yeah, they do. I was, you know, they, when you said that, I was like, man, they do. When I I met them a few years back at Social Media Marketing World in San Diego, uh -huh. and, uh, okay. yeah, it was just a treat spending time with them, and uh, you know, just their dynamic uh, you know, was yeah. amazing. You know, it's like Johnny Carson and Ed McMahon's, uh, uh, you know, the Rat Pack. We talked about them, but the chemistry that all of those guys had. There's just something magical when when you can get a group of people like that together. Totally, just, totally. I mean, because you just you feel like you're a part of their conversation, like you are sitting with the the, the fellas and 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 talking shop. So I, I I I can't let you go without asking you some questions about the UK because it's just fun. Okay, that's so fine. We talk, so we talked about you know I lived out there in Great Yarmouth and and you grew up on Benny Hill and Monty Python was probably one of my is, is one of my all time favorites. Do you have a favorite Monty Python film? Uh, the Holy Grail. It's got to be. Yeah, it's got to be. Any any favorite scene? I, all of them. I'm all, not, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the 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 phrase, uh, oh, not me. <laughs> yeah. Not me. yeah. Yeah, I think that my we're all, favorite. We're all the same. Not me. Yeah, not me. Um, if I had to go with one, it would be uh, when the Roman soldiers were, uh, you know, stoning or crucifixion. <laughs> Do you remember Truly, that? Scene? Yeah. 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 Um, how about the Queen? We are fortunate. Uh, we're one of the few countries that has a monarch, um, and she has done well. First of all, the she was born into it. She has no choice. Yep. Having said that, she, over the last uh, 60 odd years, has actually worked hard on behalf of the country. She's a good ambassador for the country. And uh, I think you've got a situation where the monarchy will, will stay in the UK, and we are, on the whole, grateful for it. Uh, it's not just, uh, it is, it's important. It's a part of a daily part right. of our, our lives. 
Um, you, your thoughts on the Queen? Because I'm going to. I do. I do. I have some. So uh, I was there for the Silver Jubilee. Um, uh huh. Seventy eight. Yep. Yep. And seventy eight. We were there. My we were at the parade, and my sisters and I. We we actually have, and I have them. We were we were given by the Queen uh, three cups, three mugs that she gave to us. We were in the parade for session. Oh wow. Unfortunately, we don't have pictures of that, but we do have the mugs and I do have the memories. And then memories, as, yeah. as I got a little older, I always thought that, that the queen was a little stuffy. Like, why? And where's her husband, by the way? Right. And it wasn't until this year when I watched the movie The Crown or the series The Crown on Netflix mm -hmm. yeah. that I have a new, res newfound respect and appreciate. I just fell in love with her. Yes. And, and the scene was the scene in the movie. If, if 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 people out there who if you like Netflix, I recommend that you watch The Crown, and you'll get a better understanding. First, how much her husband loved her. Mm. I mean, he gave up his seat to be king. I think it was uh, of Spain. Was it Spain? Greece. Or, or Greece. Greece. Yes, Greece. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to marry her. So you know, that's that's one thing. Um, and then that he, he had to accept the role that he had to be behind because he's not. Of royal blood, at least not in the in the sense of no, the monarch. That's right. I mean, he's he's consort. He's one step behind the queen. Yeah. It's always going to be the queen who leads. Yeah, and it, that was it. There was a scene when she finds out that her father had died, and it, and she's on the plane, and she's going to have to go out and meet the the. I guess she was in Africa, I believe, mm -hmm. when she that's found right, out her yeah. father had died, and she had flew back, and they were going to introduce her as the queen, and she in the and. Uh, I don't know what they call the gentleman who basically manages her. But when before, when she was a queen, she had a person and then mm -hmm. the king had a person, yeah. whoever that king, whatever that name is, you may know when he took over, he, he you know, basically fired that other guy says, now I'm in charge because she's the queen. Yes. And uh, she and, her, and he asked, her, he said, what shall we refer to you as? And he goes, she's like, excuse me. She goes, yes, you're the queen. What should we call you? He goes, mm -hmm. you know, I think her name's Mary, right? She goes, well, uh, Elizabeth, uh, uh, mm -hmm. Queen Elizabeth, it is. And he's going to go out to introduce her. And she grabs her husband's hand to go walk out. And he cuts and cuts them off and says, no, mm -hmm. you have to walk behind her. Yeah. Like, wow, that was a powerful scene. If you get to see the movie, you really like, you know, really get a sense of tradition. And then there's a scene where her and Winston Churchill was really good. So mm -hmm. we can go a long way. So that's my thought on the queen. I, I when originally I thought she's such this stuffy boring where's her husband that thought and i'm sure i'm not the only person who felt like yeah. that but you know like you know many things if you if you read the history you get a newfound respect and an understanding of why things the way they are so that's my thought on the queen i love her now right yeah so do we yeah and, you know prince i like princess die as well i remember the day mm -hmm. she you know that she was yeah. uh, killed it was a, it was a sad day for a lot of people. I really, it really, you know, had an affinity for her, which I think a lot of other people in the world did as well. Few people have a, 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 the ability to actually touch our lives in the way that uh, Princess Di did. Uh, you were talking. I mean, the, these are people who are icons. Yeah. Who we, we set upon a, a pedestal and. and uh, they reach into our lives and enrich our lives and they don't even know us. But we know them, and I think that increasingly that that it's important. It's important that we do have people we can look up to and respect. Right. And Princess Di was certainly one of those, and in the music world, I I believe Elvis was one of your. Yeah, I have a. You know, my mom was a bit huge. We had like a lot of people in the South. We had a picture of Elvis on the on the wall. And uh, I was actually at the airport in uh, in uh, the London Heathrow Airport when he uh, announced that he died. It was in seventy seven. I think it was like November of seventy seven. Mm. And uh, I, you would have thought the country shut down, or the yeah. I'm sure it was the same way when the maybe when the Beatles broke up. <laughs> Do you remember yeah, that? Yeah. Oh yes, yes indeed, <laughs> indeed. Uh, I, I I remember the Beatles era, era. Um, and it's, it is a situation where we're just fortunate to have lived through. We're yeah. fortunate to be where we are today in this period of history. Forget the politicians. They can all go and run uh, right. both, sides of the, both sides of the Atlantic. But the people uh, that we get to meet is just fantastic. Yeah, I mean, you know, being able to, to you know, just have this conversation 
Um, and, and, and not only have it, but have it live and other people being able to witness it later, you know, you know, having a new show, you may not get in the beginning a large live audience, but you certainly, uh, you know, after the replay, um, people get to do it at their own time. I mean, I do it at a Wednesday at 10 a.m., you know, people are at work. Um, but I do get a lot of interaction later on after yeah. the show is uh, and replayed and get some responses and people I'm sure will have their thoughts on how, what they thought about the queen and, and uh, hopefully that they'll have a new uh, understanding and watch the show to really see, uh, you know, some of the things that they give up as a Royal family. I mean, it's, 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 it's a, it's a, it's a tr their whole life is planned a year in advance, every yeah. a year at a time. Yeah. It's, it's amazing yeah. that they can, you know, the mental fortitude that you have to have that, that you basically yeah. give up your life and your livelihood most of the time. I don't know if I could do it. I think I would be one of those people who said, um, I'll skip being king. Can I just go to be a normal person? <laughs> All right. Um, any, any closing no thoughts on, on that? Uh, right. Well, first of all, I just want to say thank you again, Randall, for inviting me. It's, I've had a blast. It's been very enjoyable. Uh, I will return the invitation, if I may. If yeah. you want to join us any Monday at uh, 11 a.m. Eastern, you're welcome to do so. That's not an invitation. Any Monday you want, the link's always on my page. So it'd be good to, for you to join us. Uh, to everybody who's watched the show, either live or on replay, thank you. And whatever you do, do go live. As Randall said earlier, just don't forget all the everything that goes around it. Just go live. Just do it. And if you're going to do it well, do it on be live. Randy, right. thank you. Oh, thank you, Stephen. And, and and if someone wanted to uh, find you, where where would you send them? What would be the best place that they could go? Uh, the best place they can go is the live video hub. Okay, then I've got that on the screen here now. That's it. Let me put that That's there. That's it. I said earlier, 174 shows on the live video hub, and you'll find me there, and you can message me there anytime. Man, I, again, you know, I always tell guests it's like the most valuable thing that you can give is your time. And I appreciate that you gave uh, me and everyone else your time because um, it's the one thing you can't get back. You can buy other people's time, but you can't get your time back. So, again, I want to thank you, uh, Stephen. And uh, again, for everyone who has, is not familiar with uh, Stephen Healy stuff, you want to go over to uh, live video hub. Uh, it's searchable, right? In Facebook. I know search. Oh, Facebook yeah. Search yeah, yeah. You'll a little find off. it. You'll, you'll find, you'll find it. it. And just watch his stuff i mean it's some interesting stuff you, you've got your you still have your course for anyone who might want oh yes to, uh, yes the, the course the course yeah. is on uh, on udemy um yes they're there. right and uh and again for everyone who's uh who this is your, either your first time or you're watching it on uh you know live i appreciate you taking the time and watching the show and if you don't mind share or tag a friend that you may think that maybe they want to start a show. Maybe they are trying to figure ways that they're creative ways that they can grow. I mean, not only uh, you know, who they are in their business, but just grow personally and meet people throughout the world. I mean, this is one plat one way that you can meet someone uh, of maybe a better, a, a grander statue than, uh, than yourself or someone who's just a little bit ahead of you and, and actually meet them anywhere in the world and do it live. And, uh, and and have fun with it. That's the main thing. It's you've got to have fun with it. And with that, I want to say thank, thank you again. And if you're not currently following me on the Think Like a Marketer Show Facebook page, please do that. Like, show, and please comment. Every comment that you make, oh, I respond to. Like Stephen said, if you have a comment there, he'll gladly be able to answer your comments. And again, thanks, everybody, and have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday.